Hey guys, in this episode, you're going to hear Dr. Layla Streets mention how she's using CareStack. And I mean, more and more people are using CareStack, not just because it's an all-in-one cloud-based software that gets rid of all those other monthly payments, but it's a robust and dynamic practice management software that allows you to check your schedule anywhere. It's cloud-based. You can have people book online anywhere. You can communicate with your team. It does so much more. It does everything. So scroll down in the description below and click the first link in the description below to schedule a free personalized demo. See if it's a good fit for you and your practice and your workflow. And if it is, and you like what you see, you get an exclusive deal just for being a listener and viewer of the Dental Marketer Podcast. And that deal is one month for free. You get 10% off your annual subscription and 50% off your setup fee. All right, let's get into this episode. All right, it's time to talk with our featured guest, Dr. Layla Streets. Layla, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. If you don't mind me asking, where are you located? So I'm located in the beautiful and ever-growing Pinehurst, North Carolina. Okay. How's it like over there right now, the weather? It's warm. It's actually mild considering it's January. What's warm? Like temperature? 50s, 60s. Oh, yeah. That's kind of warm. Yeah. It's like yeah. here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, that makes sense. Awesome. All right. So real quick, if you can, for the audience, tell us a little bit about your past, your present. How did you get to where you are today? Um, long journey, if you want to call it that. Um, I don't know how much background you want me to get into, uh, but I was born in Europe, mm -hmm. moved to the States when I was nine, um, grew up in the Boston, Massachusetts area. I uh, went to dental school at Tufts because I didn't want to go and leave my family. And then in 2017, I direct commission with the military, um, joined the army. I was in the army for five years, decided to get out and open up the practice. Okay. That was <laughs> like a, a quick summary. <laughs> yeah, really good. Real quick, rewind a little bit. When you were in, uh, I guess, what made you want to get into dentistry in the first place? Uh, long story short, uh, growing up ever like from middle school into college, I was just trying out different um, career paths because I didn't know what I wanted to go into. I definitely knew I didn't want to be an engineer like my parents were. Um, so I was really interested in nutrition. Um, before dental school, I was actually a personal trainer for a year and a half. Um, and I decided dentistry towards my senior year in undergrad when I was majoring in microbiology and part of my, uh, you know, final grade was to do an independent research project. So I worked in an oral biology research clinic, hated the research, but I loved the science behind it and I love art and helping people. So I decided to shadow a dentist. Maybe that was the route I wanted to go into. And then I fell in love with it. I was like, this is it. Yeah. Okay, nice. So you're a personal trainer for, how'd you like that being a personal trainer? I hated it. <laughs> I love being at the gym and getting a free membership, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did not you like work it. out, whatever. And then uh, the, why'd you hate it? Like, what was the, what was your pet peeve about it? So this was back in, gosh, when did I graduate from undergrad? So it was like 2011, 2012. During that time, females mm -hmm. and women in fitness wasn't as popular as it is right now. And being a female, you know, at the gym and being maybe one of the one or two women lifting, you got a lot of um, unwanted attention. And then guys would sign up for packages just so they can talk to me and ask me oh, on a date. Okay, I know it sounds yeah. horrible, but that's what happened half the time. <laughs> yeah really okay yeah Dang, yeah that's interesting <laughs> that's interesting yeah okay no i was just asking because i went down that route a little bit and then it was kind of fun but i hated the the part where you can lead a horse to the water but you can't make them drink kind of thing you know so it's like yeah. what are we doing you know what i mean Always oh i actually horse. didn't mind that part i hated <laughs> so get this <laughs> i didn't want to be a personal trainer because i would have to you know be at work at 5 30 in the morning I was like, oh, no. And then dental school happened. And then now you're taking an exam at 7 in the morning. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and then yeah. the military happened. And here you are taking a UA test at 4 in the morning to make sure you're not taking drugs. <laughs> hey, man, yeah. You went 
you you okay so a lot of things fast forwarded from that point on so when you were in dental school did it ever occur to you like yeah i want to own my own business eventually no absolutely not this was honestly a plan b Mm -hmm. um because i am married to someone who is in the military and um we're pretty much stuck here uh, for the long term. So my husband doesn't move around. He's part of like the unit that stays here in Bragg. And so I knew I didn't want to work for a big corporate dental office. I have two kids. I'm going to be the responsible party picking up my kids from daycare. And they wanted someone to work 12 hours a day. And if there was like a family emergency, well, you better figure it out because, you know, you better find coverage. And I didn't want to put myself in that situation. So part of the reason for the family lifestyle was for me to open up an office and dictate my working hours. Hmm. Have your own like autonomy, like freedom for that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's family time and I make time for family. Um, But I also, you know, don't want someone squeezing an emergency appointment 10 minutes before closing when I have to go pick my kids up. Yeah. It's kind of interesting because you come from the army. And that's like all like, you know what I mean? Like you got to go on their regimen, their schedule kind of thing. But they are very family friendly because they worry about retention. Gotcha. Gotcha. So when you graduate, or I guess when you left the army, immediately you started your own practice or were you an associate? Immediately. Um, Really? So I was working as an associate here and there. And I had my daughter a year before my final exodus from the military. But during that year from my third trimester, starting my third trimester into August of last year, I was just doing all the plans and works for opening up the office. But I had also collected a lot of vacation days from being in the military. So I utilized them strategically to make time to work on the office, plan stuff, and do everything um, business-wise before we open up the office. So once... I actually opened up the office and saw patients before I was officially out of the military. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't know anything about like the inside of the army or anything like that or the military, but why did you leave? Um, so I left because I was unhappy. Oh, I mean, I would see soldiers for mostly exams and emergencies because they're just, there's not enough staff. Um, the army just cares about readiness. Like, is a soldier able to deploy and go down range? Is something going to happen in the next six months? If not, great. And then if I was seeing a patient, I wanted to do some sort of extensive treatment on them. I would feel bad being like, Hey, three, four months from now, maybe I can squeeze you in. And then sometimes you'll have like other army related stuff come up and now you have to cancel the appointment. Um, so it was, I, I just miss doing the best dentistry possible for my patients and having them be miserable. And of course there's drama in the clinic. If you're seeing the same people all the time, um, as a dental officer or medical officer, you're kind of at the lower level, like the echelon of who's in charge and who's not, you're the lowest. And then above you is, are the non-commissioned officers and soldiers. And then above them are the civilian employees and then above everyone else is the regional command dictating what is appropriate and what is not. And most of the time it is not appropriate for patient care, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Gosh. So it kind of sounds like, like you did it for the, your family, right? Uh, obviously. But at the same time, you're looking for freedom. Yeah. 100%. And then I like, while well, I was in the military, I started diving into different focuses or specialty focuses in dentistry that I absolutely loved. And I really wanted to pursue that and establish my practice around it. And that's honestly another main reason why I opened up my own practice is because I talked to other associates in the area. And if you know anything about Pinehurst, it's super saturated with dentists. There are so many general dentists and so many practices because everyone wants to live here. Um, I just had different ideas of what I wanted to do. And a lot of the owners weren't on the same page with me. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was more of like, outlandish giving outlandish suggestions and ideas and they didn't want to start incorporating that into their practice huh so then what did you dive into like the courses and everything like that and what were the ideas so one of the main things was uh dental sleep medicine 
uh, dental sleep medicine is becoming really big in the military just because I want to say at least 75% of soldiers have some sort of sleep related breathing disorder and mm -hmm. um, many remain undiagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. So that's when I actually started doing a lot of appliance therapy it was in the military and they pushed it because of the whole Phillips recall of the PAP appliances. So they were constantly pushing dentists to get into the courses. And then I also really got into TMJ therapy or facial pain. Um, my mom was diagnosed with a very rare dystonia. And for the past four years, she kept asking me, like, well, is this normal? Is this normal? And I had no idea. So I started looking into or facial pain. I was considering um, applying to grad school for the program. But again, given the kids, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I still do a lot of TMJ related therapy. Um, and then I really got into mid last year into uh, restrictive tongues and lips like lip ties and tongue ties and seeing how those affect development and how, you know, trying to like figure out what leads to TMJ disorders, because there's no treatment. There's only managing the pain. So I was really curious to see where the cause was, where it all starts. And um, I decided to take a myofunctional or facial myofunctional therapy course. And it just changed everything about how I do dentistry, period. Hmm. What was the course? So, yeah. So I, I realized that, honestly, TMJ disorders and um, sleep-related breathing disorders start at infancy. Yeah. literally in infancy really and how that's we should be screening patients how does it start in infancy um so i don't know if you've read or listened to any audiobooks um so at infancy we usually notice whether or not a child has a restricted restrictive tongue or lip mm -hmm. so like the tongue ties lip ties that affect how we rest our tongue posture so how we rest our tongue how we keep our lips sealed, how we're breathing. So we're supposed to be breathing through our nose all the time. It's our natural filter and um, it affects speech and yeah, literally everything. So that's when you start screening for, you know, soft tissue. Are there any like soft tissue indications? How's the baby feeding? How's the baby sleeping? Then around six months, you monitor how the baby's transition to solids. Um, and that's when we start utilizing our muscles around the face to chew, to speak. Um, and then of course diet, the foods that we feed our kids. Unfortunately, society likes to be advanced and make life easier for us when in reality it actually makes it worse for our development. So if we're not utilizing our muscles, our bones are not getting stronger and growing. So think of weightlifting. Mm -hmm. If you're not lifting, utilizing a certain muscle or body part, that um, that muscle and the bone atrophies. Same concept with the face. And if you ever listen to the audiobook uh, Jaws, A Growing Epidemic, it talks about how epigenetically um, our jaws are starting to shrink because we're not chewing as much. Everything is fast. We're not taking the time to eat. We feed babies baby food. Um, pouches, like foods in those little pouches to just drink yeah. it. Everything's with straws, no open, open cup drinking. And ultimately that leads our jaws from, prevents our jaws from developing the way they're supposed to. And it prevents us from resting our tongue against the roof of our mouth or our palate. Um, and that leads to future orthodontic treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. That's interesting. I, I don't know if I can bring this up or not, but like before we started recording, you were telling me about your day. You said sometimes you just had like a patient, I think that had something like that, right? Like in yeah, that situation. Yeah. Just like and the, you, your tongue tie, lip tie. You said there was emotional situations or there's emotion that goes into that. What does that mean? So emotion, whenever I talk to parents, it's just they have to be emotionally invested in their child's care. And then of course, any parent will agree the moment your child needs some sort of surgery you get terrified. Mm -hmm. And whenever I speak to those parents, I always think of my situation as well, because I wish I had known about my children's tongue ties and their lack of development, because I've been dealing with this for over three years now. Oh. And 
yeah, so my children's situation is why I prompted to learn more about my functional or facial my functional therapy. Um, and now I'm pushing my son through programs. I'm going to do his tongue tie release next week. Um, I've been getting him into body work and just trying to see what I can do therapeutically and functionally in order to prepare him for probably a rapid palatal expander in the future. So he's not stuck having sleep apnea because it runs in my family or TMJ related pain. Cause again, that runs in my husband's side of the family. Wow. So yeah. this is, uh, I mean, it's happening with your kids, right? Right now. Absolutely. So then how do you, I guess, talk to the parent to calm their emotion down or to let them know like they need this. I know it sounds difficult. Like how, I don't even know if I can ask how old that child was, but like, how do you do that? I don't ever tell a parent what they need to do. I tell them what's going on, what could happen if it's left untreated. This is why it's great if we do the procedure. And I always try to reassure them that like, hey, it's normal. You know, I'd rather get this treated versus seeing them maybe in 20, 30, 40 years with TMJ related pain. And then at that point, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do much. Even at 12, most of your craniofacial complex is developed. There's only so much you can do up until the age of 12, at least, like at most. And so intervention has to be early. And I tell them like, hey, you know, take your time because you have to be emotionally ready for this and emotionally invested in this because you're going to be doing the stretches at home with your baby. If you're not mentally ready to just listen to a baby cry six times a day while you're stretching that um, scar tissue, then it's not a good idea because, you know, left untreated or if you don't, you know, continue doing the exercises that uh, connective tissue is just going to get more hard and difficult to treat in the future. Yeah, man. So all this, this is like the route you went down. You know what I mean? Like you decided yeah. to learn about this, study it, take this idea on the other practices. They don't want this in there or the other owners didn't want this. in their No, practice? absolutely not. They were just so anti it because they don't, the, they themselves don't know anything about it. And I just wanted to work with his associate and be like, hey, can I do this like two, three times a week? And can I just do sleep appliances? I'm totally comfortable doing everything, blah, blah, blah. Because it probably, it includes a lot of different business management protocols. So of course you have to like have all your consent forms in place, like figuring out what to do with insurances. And some down the road just don't want to go that route if they've practiced like that for 20 plus years. Oh, and by the way, there aren't that many younger dentists here. Hmm. maybe like one of four who are not in their 50s 60s really so realistically Layla how long did it take you to implement the business side of this <laughs> I just I just go by it every day I don't I'm I sort of plan it and then I just try and execute as much as possible I don't, I'm I only plan so far ahead it's okay. It's entrepreneur, right? Like that's how you do it. You're like, well, it's, yeah, you, you do that. And then of course I have like the military perspective where I'm really good at getting things done really fast. So I look at a 50 meter target, then I look at the hundred meter target and then I look at the 500 meter target. Gotcha. So I just like get everything prepared as needed. Cause if I think of everything and try to over plan and plan and then plan every single situation, I will become overwhelmed. Mm. So, are so you someone... not, like too much at once will overwhelm me. And then I just like break down and stop. So mm. I just digest pieces as they come my way. So where you say you're someone who looks at, all right, this is my 10 year goal, five year goal, or no, you're just like, I got to get here in six months. I got to get here in the next six months, three months, things like that. Um, I've realized that whatever plan one or two years out, doesn't usually occur. So I do like the, by next month, I got to hit this target. My goal in three or six months is this. Hopefully in like two, three years, I can expand and do this and just like have a practice like this. <laughs> Things are always changing. Like my, what I'm doing right now, I didn't plan seven months ago. So really? the whole, my functional, my functional therapy is fairly new to me. Mm, okay. So and then- Three months ago, what was the goal? How'd you create that process or that system to get to where you're at today? I don't remember. 
It's like, I mean, honestly, for the past six, ever since I opened, what, six months ago, my primary focus has been marketing and educating everyone on what I know on social media. Um, oh. Just educating, being very um, involved in the community. That was another thing that really inspired me to do in our areas to cater to veterans and um, active duty military members. Mm. So I've been very involved in just like targeting them as well. Um, giving them more resources. They're also the ones with kids here. Um, no, it's just mostly focusing on marketing and trying my best to get the word out that we exist because that's my biggest concern is just making sure that people understand that we exist. And it just, I mean, I'm changing plans with my team almost weekly. It's like, okay, this is our protocol this week. Okay, this is, didn't work last week. Let's try something else. I mean, we have clinic meetings literally every week, and I spend at least half an hour to an hour, hour and a half, depending on whether or not a patient cancels last minute, to figure out how we can be more efficient. Is a clinic meeting different than, like, uh, I guess, like your admin day or morning huddle kind of thing? Yeah. So during my admin days, I mostly try to come up with like game plans i network with different specialists i take care of like my kids appointments um i kind of work with the schedule trying to see how i can arrange it to be most efficient um i create templates for whatever notes i need to be more organized um it's just trying to be more efficient and save time that's what i do on my admin days and then if the clinic <laughs> gotcha. And then the clinical meetings? The clinic meetings, we brainstorm. So how can we kind of like what kind of activities can we do together as a team? What how can we draw more people in? What can be our, you know, fun giveaway for our patients this month? Or um, what products should we start incorporating or uh, that kind of stuff? Gotcha. When it comes to the fun giveaways. What have you noticed where it's like, oh, this is it. And that, that over there was not it. That that's not going to be doing anything. People like free stuff. <laughs> so like what kind of free stuff? Um, I've done the veneer giveaways. People like those. Um, I've done new patient specials for teeth whitening. Um, people enjoyed those too. I mean, it's mostly stuff to build my portfolio, just like the cosmetic aspect of dentistry. Cause I enjoyed it. It's really fun. Um, and then just trying to get patients to book their next appointment sooner. So this month we're giving away a 10 day gym pass um, at a local gym. And it's just to encourage patients to come in again because then they get another ticket. <laughs> okay. That's good. I like that. And then you mentioned on your admin day that you network with specialists. Yes. How do you do that? So I do a lot of, um, functional treatments. So yes, I can do like the quick prescription writing or the quick uh, Botox injections, trigger point injections, or I can do more therapeutic approaches where I focus on body work. I focus on uh, referring patients to breath workers, that kind of stuff. And that's how I network. I network with physical therapists, with chiropractors, um, lactation consultants. I I mean, that's pretty much it. Body work specialists, uh, cranial sacral massage therapists. I've attempted to reach out to other physicians and that is almost impossible it's mm. almost impossible to get a response back but anyone that does physical therapy um or chiropractic work those were my go-tos and they're phenomenal yeah how do you do That's that where like... parents tend to go first whenever they notice something is not functioning properly in their child physical therapy physical therapy chiropractor and uh, massage therapists Oh, interesting. And lactation consultants for infants. Yeah. When when you approach these, I guess, like businesses, what's the script or like what's the strategy behind that? We follow each other on uh, social media. I'm like, hey. And you reach out. <laughs> I just reach out like, hey, I noticed that you do this and this. And fortunately, fortunately enough, most are military spouses too, because we have a very, very big military population here and veteran population. Fort Bragg is like 30 minutes, 30 miles from here. Um, so everyone tends to live in this area versus Fayetteville. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty easy that way. And it's all through social media, the way you reach out. 
most almost all through social media. I'm not the kind of person just like randomly walk someplace and be like, hey, I'd like to talk because most people are busy. Most professionals are busy. It's easier just to coordinate um, to a place to meet up. And then you see what everyone posts about what their social media is about, what their ideas are about, what their mission is about. And so you kind of just meet up to get to know one another in person and just, you know, see what how you can be a help to them. Yeah. Because ultimately, as a provider, your primary care is to make sure that your patients are taken care of. Gotcha. Okay, that's nice. I like that. Okay, so is it okay now we kind of dive into your business? Talk about yeah. that a little bit? Okay. Yeah. How'd you find your location, first and foremost? I used to live less than a mile from here. And I was um, looking for a space to lease that was close to home. And that was conveniently located close to my kids' daycare slash schools. Because again, in case my husband decides to stay in for 20 plus years in the military, someone has to be responsible. Someone has to be a responsible party and making sure they're picked up and stuff like that. And unfortunately, the selection that I had in open in open spaces was very limited. Um, this was the space that I have right now. It's is a space that I looked at last year. No, before last year, what, 20... 21 in May and I decided to go ahead and sign a lease agreement in August. Oh. Yeah, so I, so. Was, I was trying to do my homework but it was just so limited. This year is growing rapidly. Man, did you do well real quick before I ask that. Mm -hmm. You said be in case my husband decides to stay in the middle, has he not decided yet or has he decided? Well, he keeps signing contracts, extended <laughs> contracts without talking to me. <laughs> Okay, so he could, if it ever occurred, what's the lease agreement here when, with your building? Is it like a specific, what do you guys agree on? 10 years with um, the option to extend the lease for five years twice. Um, I also got have first bids in purchasing the building if it gets become goes on the market. Same with the space that's next door. Because my space is really small. It's a small office. Okay, so... For sure, for sure, you know you're going to be there for 10 years then. Probably. I mean, worst case scenario, I just run out the space. I'm telling you, yeah. I don't plan. I I say, sure, this is great for 10 years, but I don't know what my life is going to be like three years from now. Yeah, no you, you're right. You're, you know what? There, there's 100% truth to that. You know, you can try and plan it out. Okay. So then in case your husband does decide to stay in the military for 20 years, you're going to be. <laughs> what? I'm going to be in the area. Yes. Yeah. Why do you hope not? For him to extend it? Because I don't like his schedule. <laughs> Is it like weird? Well, he deploys. So with the unit he's with, he deploys every other year for six months. Oh, yeah, and so tough. all responsibilities on me. Fortunately, this is like the silver lining. Um, my parents decided that they were going to move down here to North Carolina. So now I definitely cannot move. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I'm getting that extra, extra no. help. That's good. That's fantastic, though, that you get extra help. Yeah. How I get, or are they down there yet already or no? No, 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 no. They're, they're still up in Massachusetts, but they're hoping to um, move here in the next six months or so. Okay. How does that feel, Ayla? Like when and it's my parents like, are gonna Yeah. No, not the, when your parents are here, yeah. But at the same time, like six months, you're like, man. I am on my own. I have a business. I got to run this thing. Kids. You know what I mean? Like, how does it feel? Overwhelming at times. I've definitely stopped caring about myself, which is sad. It's a sad reality. Um, like going back to the gym, I used to go to the gym and work out almost daily. I have not gone to the gym in a year and a half. Really? Yeah. Why? Why did you feel like you had to stop caring about yourself? Because I want to take care of my kids too. Because I'm gone most of the day. So once I drop them off, I'm at work for like nine hours at least. I try to get as much work done as possible because once I'm at home, it's not going to happen. There's absolutely no way. And um, there's constantly emails that I have to reply to, messages, Make sure to pay this, make sure to send this bill out, make sure to answer and reply to this inquiry. I mean, it's just constant busy work. 
Mm. Do you ever get that mom guilt? I did. When? Since day one. When with my son, I actually started a residency program in the military and I was there from 5.30 till 5.30. And I was just like, I can't do this. On top of my husband having to deploy during residency, I was like, nah, no, I'm going to fail this. So after three months, I just like resigned. I was like, yeah, that, that's, that was 100% mom guilt. I wasn't there with my son. I never saw him. And he was only seven months old then. Yeah. So that, so since day one, you still feel it now or no? Sometimes on the weekends I do. Cause they will, I mean, the moment I get home, they will not let go of me on the weekends. It's mama, mama, mama all the time. So yeah, they definitely miss me, but I'd rather miss me now than when they want to play sports. <laughs> yeah. Or when they get like, you know, an older or there. It's funny. It's, <laughs> it's a funny transition. I mean, you've seen it, right? Like, you're at that age. They like love you. They, 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 man, my mom is the best mom ever. My dad's the best. My dad can beat up your dad. You know what I mean? You're, like, you're talking about yeah. that. You get into middle school, high school. You're like, man, mom, dad, you don't know anything. Like, don't, don't just drop me off far away. And oh, then I'll yeah, walk. Or, you know? No, I keep telling my husband, I was like, man, we're putting so much sacrifice in these kids. And then when they turn 18, I'll never hear from them again. It's great. <laughs> but then look at you now. Look, that, that's what I'm saying. Then after that, you're going to get to that point where it's like, Mom and dad have always been right. I need them now. Like I, I yeah. they need to be here next to me. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. So kind of comes back, but it's tough. It's tough. I feel like, especially for that on your own six months, dude, that's good job for yeah. you. Good <laughs> job for you. Okay. So then back to the practice business. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> went and got a loan at a specific yes. bank or no? Yes. I went with Bank of America. Why'd and- you go with them? So my number one concern was cash flow. And of course, with cash flow, you need a loan that's, you know, not going to charge you like that doesn't expect you to pay everything back within five years. So they were the ones that were giving me the 10 year option to pay back. And um, I talked with Wells Fargo and they were only going to do it for nine years. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to Bank of America for good. Gotcha. How much was and the... it had a great interest rate, so I was like, whatever. <laughs> what were the interest rates? I want to say it was like 3.2 oh. or something that I got for. I have great credit score, so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. No, that's really, really good, yeah. And then how much was the loan in total? So originally when I applied, it was like 500 grand. And then mm-hmm. um, given the whole inflation during the whole build out and equipment purchase period, I asked for more and they gave me up to 633 Oh, wow. That's good. And then, yeah. so from that point on construction, like the build out, how much was that? Expensive. Um, I think, so my landlord gave me 90 grand. So he gave me 90 grand for the um, TI allowance and then construction still cost 300. And it's oh. a small space. It's a 1600 square foot space. So how many ops is it? Just honestly, right now, three in one room that's equipped to hold an operatory, but I'm not utilizing it for it. I just like put carpet in there and now it's like store slash storage slash uh photography room. Oh cool. Photography room. That's nice. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay. So then what type of practice do you have? Is it um like are you taking all kinds of insurance? Is it pedo or is it general cosmetic? Is what you're focusing on specialist or so the focus is holistic dentistry. And honestly I had no idea I was a holistic dentist until uh maybe two months ago. <laughs> because it was so difficult everyone kept asking us like what are you I was like I'm a general dentist but I do a lot of airway dentistry I do cosmetic dentistry and I do um functional therapy I don't push crazy treatments on anyone of course I mean I see families of all types but I never really and I of course the TMJ uh function uh but I never knew that I was a holistic dentist and I'm not a biologic dentist, biological dentist or biologic, but I'm a holistic dentist. I look at the overall picture. I literally talk to my patients about everything when I present a treatment plan, about their airway, about how their um, clenching and grinding leads to certain um, clinical findings. So they leave here knowing everything. And normally you notice whenever they leave knowing everything, that's a good ROI. Like what's the new patient, I guess? 
time limit here? You're you're sitting with them, talking to them. So when I first started off and I had all the time in the world, I was spending two hours on a new patient exam to include to include profi if needed. Um, now I've cut it down to roughly 75 minutes to 90 minutes. If, and uh, for the most part, I've been getting, um, in like patients who are in network with certain insurances. Um, so yeah, that's been the primary patient base, even though most of the dental offices here are FIFA service. Are you going to be are you FIFA service? Huh? Are you fee for service or? I was trying to. I am for medical procedures. You're trying to. Yes, I was trying to, and I would love to. Um, I'm definitely fee for service for all medical procedures. So anything that has to do with sleep, appliance therapy, um, tongue, lip tie releases, uh, TMJ therapy, that's all medical. What happened? Why, why were you trying and not anymore? So here's the thing. For anyone who has the ability to pay for a dentist out of pocket, like direct out of pocket expenses, they already have a dentist. Like I said, there are, are so many dentists here. And um, I thought I was going to stand out by doing different treatments and doing more holistic dentistry. And that's not the case. Um, most of the families here at least are on United Concordia, which is like the military uh, dental insurance company. Mm. Or they're veterans, so they're you know you know Concordia, Delta. Um, I'm even in network with the VA, so mm. now I'm one of three practices here, and there are, like I said, at least ten offices, one of three that accept VA patients. And quite honestly, one of some of the best patients are either active duty or veterans. I just love them; they're amazing. They're so grateful for everything, and they all have some sort of sleep related breathing disorder. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. So oh. I mean, I'm getting a return on investment. By accepting insurances, when I get the word out about my office, because I'm one of the non-corporate um, dental offices here who accepts insurances, but also um, people are more motivated to do advanced treatment because no other dentist has talked to them about the things that I show them and talk to them about. Mm, gotcha. So okay. I'm the kind of person, huh? No, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I'm like the kind of dental provider who shows, like I take photos. I take photos of literally everything. And I'm like, okay, see this here? Do you have this and this by any chance? And yes, it's always like check mark. Yes, I experienced this. Yes, I don't understand why no other dentist has ever brought this up with me. They told me I need an Invisalign to fix this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, not really. It's more so function and there could be a different underlying cause. Ah, huh. okay. So that's yeah. the main the main thing you're... And so... Do you plan to eventually go for back to fee for service or try or? So one thing I told myself I will never do is I will never drop military insurances, military and veteran. No, 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 no. Because mm -hmm. that's part of why I wanted to do what I do is because I can actually deliver the treatments to those who have given for our country. Yeah. And those are my people. Yeah. I was going to say, they're like <laughs> your people. You know, you know all they're about that. People. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There are plenty of veterans here. Like, veteran dentists who don't who are in a network with dental insurances hopefully if at some point you know the reimbursement is worse than it is right now i mean right now it's abysmal if it's ever worse i'm probably going to have my patients um try and contact their insurance providers being like hey this is insane blah blah, blah. can you just make sure that you reimburse this provider better i mean it takes a team in order to make a change yeah oh yeah i get you okay awesome so then that's what you're doing now. You have already gotten the loan. You found the location that way. Yes. You let us know what type of practice. How many employees do you have? Right now, I have two front desk. One is um, one is also a dental assistant. I have a dental assistant full time, and I am hiring a hygienist that should hopefully start in two weeks because our books are getting busy. Oh really? That's I don't funny. like having patients wait two or th like over two weeks to be seen for treatment how many days are you open for the week so technically right now three so three open three days this month starting next month what i'm doing for my wednesday days is um i am doing free airway screenings for children 17 and under 
for the entire year. So every Wednesday, 30 minutes, if a parent has any concern about their child snoring or mouth breathing or um, they have any sort of non-nutritive sucking habits, I'll be more than happy to assess them for free. So like Wednesdays are my free days. <laughs> yeah. Work for free. Um, and then if, you know, I can recommend them to certain specialists if I think they need to see an ENT, um, I can send to body work. If I see that their posture is not that great, I can talk about treatments that we do in office. So it's kind of to recruit patients and help them out. But it's also to help parents realize that, hey, maybe this is a good time to intervene with development because there is something preventing your child from reaching their best biological potential. Hmm. And you might see certain issues down the, down the line unless you already see them. And usually parents will see something with their child by six months of age. Wow. Okay. So how do you market that day? Oh, I just like posted a free, like on social media, I posted ads that say free this on the community uh, Facebook groups. I just posted like, Hey, anyone who's interested in, in coming in on Wednesday, I'm doing free screenings for, all pediatric patients. Um, if you have any questions during the time, you're welcome to ask. That's when I will also do free assessments for tongue and lip ties. Um, Cause sometimes parents don't know. Kids are really good at, you know, finding ways to adjust and still function, even though they have certain deficits, like I don't want to call them deficit, but um, something physically disabling them from properly functioning and eating and sleeping and all that good stuff. Yeah. And yeah, then I've, yeah. I was going to say, how would a, how would a baby really know? You know what I mean? Until like, oh, I'm not supposed to be doing it this way kind of thing, you know? Like at which age group? I don't know. Like how would, how would a baby know? How would a baby know that they're not? For example, if like something's uh disabled or not functioning well, right? Oh, oh so for infants, yeah. like anyone before the age of six, of course, if a mother is trying to breastfeed, Baby's not going to latch properly. She's going to have a painful time nursing. Those are the first cues. Or the baby's unable to swallow the milk. They're frequently eating, only eating for like five, 10 minutes. Um, they wake frequently during the night because they're constantly hungry because they weren't able to swallow their food properly. So that's when you first see it, early stage of development. Then around six months is when you should see a child um, transition to solids. If they are very picky with which foods they're eating, it's because of texture. They're unable to swallow it properly. Even for toddlers who have teeth, if they, you know, if something requires chewing, a lot of chewing, it requires a lot of muscle activation. If they're used to just eating easy to chew foods, well, those muscles are not properly developed and they're going to have food aversions. Or if they can chew properly, they'll have like chipmunk sized um, cheeks holding food in their mouth until they swallow it. Or mm. if a child or an adult has um, IBS, that's another sign that there's, uh, there's like a gut oral connection where they're not probably chewing, digesting the food. And then of course they're not probably, they're not um, properly digesting it in their GI tract. Gotcha. Okay. I was kind it's of wondering. It's all connected. Yeah. Yeah. It is like for real. A hundred percent. It is. I mean, this isn't separate from the rest of the body. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. I think, uh, I was more wondering cause we have a ton of nieces and nephews. So I was like, I wonder if any of them do, I never paid attention, you know, to see most, I will tell you, I want to say most of the population is deficient in chewing, especially in the Western civilization. Like anyone who's in Western medicine, following Western medicine probably has some sort of um, improper balance with how they're chewing or they're resting their mouth or resting their tongue and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. So then real quick, how many day, I mean, how many hours in the day are you working? Uh, roughly eight to eight and a half patient care. We don't take lunch breaks. None of my team wants to take a lunch break. I gave them the option of like, hey, you guys want third minute? No, no, no. We just want to work straight through. If I can leave earlier, awesome. And I'm a-okay with that. Okay, yeah. No complaints. Yeah. I was like, hey, if you need a snack in between, go ahead and take that snack. Like, you need water? Just leave the water close by. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what system would you say is unique in your practice that you feel like you've created or adopted? 
um, system that's unique. It's not the most efficient because we're not really always good with our time. Mm -hmm. Just being a startup, we're not rushed. Um, I also don't have a killer overhead right now because I'm not paying an obnoxious amount on my um, loans for Bank of America right now. I'm just paying the interest. So I can mm -hmm. kind of take time to um, figure things out and work with my team. But yeah, the system, uh, it's, really, it's a really tough question to ask. I don't It's like, I don't know how to explain it. No worries. No worries. No. It could be anything like from a, a new patient exam system, how we answer phones or like oh, okay. handoff back to front office kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so we've gotten really good about scheduling patients. Um, one of the most important things that we do is I know you love CareStack. I loved CareStack before I ever listened to your podcast. Um, CareStack oh, you use CareStack? Yeah. I didn't I know that. It. Yeah, so CareStack is honestly the best practice management software ever used. It does come with a price, but it saves your life. Um, I had one of my friends from dental school. He was a year behind me. He opened up a practice in Massachusetts, and I was just asking randomly, like, different dentists. I was like, which practice software, uh, practice management software do you use? Because I had a different one in the military, and then they transitioned to Dentrix, like the military style Dentrix, but it was Dentrix, mm -hmm. which I did not like. It was just too much. Um, I tried Open Dental with certain places that I moonlighted at. Same with Eagle Soft. Again, I just, I just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Visually, it was too much. CareStack is, looks beautiful, and you can do your medical forms, you can do your um, dental forms. It's you can upload things really easily. My um, my X-ray software stuff is also integrated in there. It's it's great. It makes you know managing payments super easy. Looking at the ledger is super easy. Super easy. Yeah, it's super easy. It means cool. like you have to have played with different practice software management, like different softwares in order to realize how easy this is after getting enough training. Cause it's all, it has so many cool features, but you have to, it takes a couple of months to kind of get used to. Why'd you go with them out of every other like cloud based software? Cause it looked beautiful. It was just so easy on the eyes. Gotcha. Okay, it was that's easy on the eyes. <laughs> easy on the eyes cool i didn't know that i didn't know you were um with care stack good enter care stack ad here and then go <laughs> no but um okay so then real quick just one with care stack mm -hmm. how much did you pay for it or how much a are month? you paying yeah how much are you paying a month right now i think it's like 600 okay and it's cloud-based that was the other main important thing because you know how i am with my family I need to be able to finish notes or plan ahead of time in case I can't do it or like in case I have to rush or get someone from daycare and it actually saved us big time. So I don't know if you were tracking, um, but a little over a month ago here in Moore County, there was a massive power outage mm. and it was on the news and we all lost power for almost a week. I was luckily in Boston doing a course for most of it and I brought my daughter with me. Um, but this area lost power for a week. And so I was able to reschedule patients, <laughs> call them, and just make sure everyone's okay. Um, because some people, I mean, I do see active duty soldiers here too, based off of referrals. And then if someone had to deploy or something, go on a training, I can just like squeeze them in or do something, kind of just coordinate things. But that was super helpful. Nice. Okay, cool. Awesome. So then one of the last questions I want to ask you is throughout this process, I guess from the moment you... From the last six month deployment till right now today, or I guess from the moment you started your practice till today, what's been some of the biggest struggles or fails or pitfalls you've experienced? Failures with signing up with certain SEO companies or credentialing companies, especially for medical, biggest waste of money and time. Trying to file medical insurances, biggest waste of time. Those are the money pitfalls that I invested in. Um, difficult times still is getting enough patients. That's always going to be a struggle, but I think we have over 50 new patients this month, which is nice. insane. Yeah. And so I mean, literally I have a family member come in great experience. Like, Oh, I want to bring my kids in. Can I bring like my family of seven? Yeah. <laughs> 
So That's yeah, good. the the growth this month has been awesome. The I wish I had more of a clear mission statement starting off because I changed my brand mm. as of last month. I changed it because I said I had no idea I was a holistic dentist and there were no holistic dentists here. I was like, I don't know what I am. I'm not a conventional dentist that just looks at teeth. I, that's the last thing I look at. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, your teeth look great. However, you have all these other medical conditions that could affect <laughs> the long-term prognosis of your treatment if you were to pursue it. So let's let's get that you know handled first. Yeah. No, I like that. Real quick. Could I ask, what was the SEO company's name that you felt like it was a waste of money? It's like, I want to say it was like Ad IQ or something that Google suggested. Oh, okay. horrible like, yeah, stay away from them same with like if you anyone ever wants to credential with medical stay away from like become healthcare they like to advertise themselves as being awesome and amazing but oh my goodness when you pay someone to credential you way over a year before you even open your practice and they're they never did anything oh. bad luckily it was only two um medical insurance tricare and the va mm, big regrets or yeah. trying to like teach some of my staff to do medical billing. It's just best to just do it as a fee for service because no other dental provider does it here in network. Oh, so you're, you're not doing medical billing at all. Nope. I give my patients a super bill. Maybe in the future we'll try to file it with their um, medical insurance, but medical insurances prefer patients filing their stuff. So mm -hmm. that's what I do for tra tracker. Cause I've, again, I'm a military spouse and I'm on tricare Whenever I go out of network for treatment, I file my own paperwork and then you get reimbursed. And they tend to be generally better than dental insurance because I don't like dental insurance. Yeah. I really don't. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I get you. When it comes to the SEO company, how much did you spend on that? I think it was two or three grand. And I asked them two or three days later to stop doing everything. I was like, end this. As soon because as you signed they, up? As soon as I signed up to it, because I, I still get spam calls on occasion. They went into my, like, I created a website myself to save some money, like, mm -hmm. a year out before opening up the office. Because I had a lot of downtime being pregnant and my husband being deployed. And my mom was there to help me out, like, for three months. Mm -hmm. um, but they went in, created this ugly-looking not personal whatsoever website with the ugliest stock photos and they went into my google business account and uploaded the same ugly stock images and i was like oh no 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 no! i deleted everything and <laughs> and you just said no more no more i think my best form of marketing so far has been using utilizing the local newspaper here mm. um so many people read it, especially those that don't have social media. So you're looking at the 45, 50 and older club. Mm -hmm. um, and then for social media, I'm attracting everyone who's middle-aged or with children or anyone who's interested in more of like the natural approach to stuff. Um, breastfeeding mothers, huge. Mm -hmm. And that it all didn't, that wasn't popular until maybe like 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So that's been the best medium of marketing right now. SEO company. Oh. I mean, you're not even doing that at all, right? Like the SEO no, anymore. No, no. I, yeah. I paid a different website to create my website. Um, so I have something more formal and I don't want to manage it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going you're gonna to have to start outsourcing things and everything like that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so then, to... no, yeah, yeah, good. Good. Last question for real, for real throughout this time, how has this affected your personal life, your startup? Um, so my husband has been trying to be as supportive as possible and we definitely clash a little bit more, but we're trying to be optimistic about everything. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm still not bringing any sort of income, which is tough. Um, I'm trying to turn it around a little bit, hopefully this year, but it does take a while, especially for an area that's so, so saturated with providers, but yeah. words getting out and, like I said, it's what January 12th and I still get at least three new patient appointments scheduled a day. And that was unheard of. We started off with maybe 12 new patients our first month and it was always like in a 20 ish range and now it's over 50 and that's amazing. Yeah. That's super amazing. Really? Like you're going to have to, well, you are going to have to open up another day and stuff like that because it's going to... At some point, yeah. So my Wednesdays are literally just going to be my functional therapy and screening 
patients. And hopefully I can just spread some awareness about, you know, proper development. Cause even if I can just change one or two children's lives and means the world. Cause there are yeah. so many parents who are like, Oh, my child can't sleep, doesn't behave well in school was diagnosed with ADHD. And most oftentimes it's something related to sleep. Yeah. And you don't even think about it. I mean, you're mentioning no. all these things and I'm starting to like realize a lot. I'm like, Oh my God, do they have this? My niece or nephew? I don't know. You know, it's interesting. Yeah. You don't even Cause it's it. normal. Everyone yeah. has, it. it's normal. It's common. No, it's just because it's normal. It's not okay. But yeah, if you ever want to listen to a book, there's this one guy who holds a podcast my husband is obsessed with him he's like a neurologist phd guy over at stanford he mentioned it before too right after i'd already listened to the um audiobook jaws the hidden epidemic it's really it's eye-opening um i'm still uh, trying to listen to the book called breathe as well and, oh mm, yeah gotcha. I okay to I can't. <laughs> I oh, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Layla, thank you so much for being with us. It's been a pleasure. But before we say goodbye, can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah. Uh on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash uh smiles in the pines. And then on Instagram, which is my super active uh social media account, it is um smiles underscore in underscore the underscore pines. I had awesome. to make it different. <laughs> <laughs> just the spaces now i get you awesome so guys that's going to be in the show notes below and layla thank you so much for being with us it was a pleasure and we'll hear from you soon yeah thanks for having me <laughs>